This is Rep Represent Sunday. And uh, last Sunday, I started talking about Represent. And uh, I want to sort of finish that today, but I want to lead into uh, the opportunities that God is giving us here at Ambassadors Worship Center. So if you would just hang in there with me, it will be good and we will stick together. Amen? Amen. So at the top of your notes, thank you all so much. At the top of your notes, just write the word represent, represent. And sometimes we say represent. Now, these next few minutes, because there are some of you who are here today, uh, and let me, let me, let me, let me confirm it. Uh, there are some of you here today and you're praying about your life. You're praying about where you live that life. You're praying about uh, affiliation with church. You're praying about what changes you need to make in January for your own life. Whether it's health, whether it's wealth, whether it's church, whether it's the environment you're going to put your children in. You're praying about all those things right now and I believe that you're here. So uh, I can help you make quick, short, fast, and precise decisions uh, if you hear what I'm saying today. Uh, so instead of hanging out in a church for a year or two and then finding out I don't fit in this vision, you can know in an hour. You can know in an hour if it's the right place for you, right place for your family, uh, right place for you to discover and to develop as a person, the right place that's given the message that you need to hear that helps to benefit your life. And you'll also know how to plug into this place and take advantage of the anointing on this house. There is a different anointing on this house. There is a different anointing on this house and it does not exist anywhere else. And you can, you can search the whole city, you're not going to find it. Um, and that's not bragging, that's just the truth. And uh, so we, it doesn't matter to us here at AWC which corner you put us on. Amen. Uh, like Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger King and King Kong, they can be on the same block, the same corner, but they all do something different. Well, no, they all serve burgers. Well, why do you have a taste for Burger King some days and some days you have a taste for Wendy's? They are different and they have found out exactly what their calling is in a particular city or particular region or particular world. Here at Ambassadors Worship Center, we know what we're called to do and to be. And we also know what the end product should be from our work. We know what that should be. And if you're in this place in your life where you don't just want to hang out, if you're in this place in your life where you want to become, if you're in this place in your life where you really truly want to discover, this would be the right place for you. If you're in this place today and you would just like to find a place where you're just tired of fighting and fussing with everybody, and you want to be in a place where people are pretty intentional about being together. Now, look at your neighbor and say, let's get this out of the way. You're, you, you're weird and I'm weird too. So we're just going to pick the stuff that doesn't make us look weird. We're going to pick the stuff that brings us together and not the stuff that separates us. And if that's not what you want to do, if you like to be separate, if you like the factions in Christianity, if you like, if you like the way Christianity is working right now, good for you. I'm not on board. I'm not walking with it. I'm not looking for a king. I have one already. So, uh, and that's just the truth. I believe Jesus is king. I believe there's no other king. We don't need to put a crown on anyone else's head. Uh, I believe I need a crown myself. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. Hold on for an hour now. Hold on. But I believe I, believe I was born to wear a crown. I was, believe I was born to rule. I believe that you were born to rule as well. So you're better off looking inside than outside for your power. I just believe that with all my heart. You probably need some scripture because it sounds like opinion right now, doesn't it? But Genesis, Genesis 1.26 is where we always start. Because that's the beginning of what God wanted, what, God, what was in his heart in the beginning. When he said, when he said, then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness and according to our, according to our image and according to our likeness, let them have, let them, this man we're going to build, let them have dominion or governmental rule, diplomacy. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, everything that creeps upon the earth. He gave that to them. He made a list. That list is found also in Genesis 2. Same list. He didn't change the list. He didn't add Aunt Bertha to the list. He didn't add Uncle Leroy to the list. It's a list of 
animals, it's a list of environments, it's a list of other things and not people, right? So Adam and Eve, the first thing God gave them was this ability to rule, have diplomatic rulership of this planet, which meant he would not live here. He came and he met with them during the cool of the day, but he didn't live on the planet. He gave it to them. This is the first sign of diplomatic rulership. It is designated authority. It is representation. So God is like, I don't have to lead the animals. I'll let you do that. The Bible says whatever Adam named it, that is what it became. So we have to be careful when we talk about things or talk about people or talk about situations because you will either baptize it good or bad with your words. Well, why, wasn't God, why won't God do something? He did. He sent you. So whenever you show up, you got to understand God just showed up. So when we say, come, Lord Jesus, he says, I'm here. <laughs> when we say, go, Lord Jesus, to the hospital, he says, well, I'm ready to go. Who's going to take me there? Right? So now in Genesis 3, we have this thing that happens. It's very important that we understand what happens. And when we say Christmas season, Christmas season is really every day if we understand the true meaning of Christmas. Right? So in the beginning... In the beginning of time, we were God's representative. In Genesis 3, a lot of weird things happened. But the bottom line is the enemy tricked Adam and Eve with their ignorance. What they did not realize was going on with them, and they simply abdicated their rulership and leadership. They gave it, they gave it to Satan. They gave the earth back into his diplomatic control simply by not understanding that they were already like God. They were walking in the power of God. They were representing him to the earth. So now everything changes. Listen, this is the one act of disobedience. It created an uncovering in their relationship with God, and it got them fired from their assignment. Their assignment was representation. That was their assignment. But by eating, I don't know, an apple, a grape, or kumquat, kiwi, whatever that was, when they ate that, they literally told God, we no longer are going to represent you. So God took everything. They did not know they were getting ready to lose everything. They just thought it was good for food and for wisdom. But nothing Satan can offer you is just going to be good for food. It's going to change your whole life. You're going to lose some things you didn't know you were getting ready to lose. You're going to lose your own freedoms when you give it to someone else. Never expect anything from an earthly government that you can only expect from God. That will allow you to live in harmony with your earthly governments. Because you have no real big expectations of it. You can love and pray for everybody because they're human. Uh -uh. I'm not looking to you for that. I'm looking. Why would you look to an army to protect you with bullets when you got angels can just wipe everything out? Some of it will make sense as you begin to learn the kingdom of God and how it works. Changes your life forever. Am I making sense? I feel like I am. So the enemy always tries to trick you with your own ignorance. As a matter of fact, you can bet, okay, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the Bible says that he's only a deceiver. That's all he is. He's only a liar. That's all he does. So when the devil shows up to you and says, you not, you're not going to have money to pay the rent, shout, because that means <laughs> he doesn't know how to tell the truth. He only knows how to lie. So anything you hear him say, it means that because he can still have access to heaven, he can still have access to what God's doing. Oh, my God, help me finish. He, he has access to the reality of the kingdom. So when he comes to you, it means like with Job's case, he has already been in the presence of God because he hasn't been kicked out yet. He's been in the presence of God and he knows what's coming for you. So to keep you out of what's coming, he comes to tell you that it's not coming. 
But him saying that it's not coming is evidence. That, that, that's, that's, how this, that's how this works. It's, it's evidence that God has this supernatural plan for you. I'm going to finish for real. So now watch this. In the middle of all this, God makes this prophecy, and it's important that you understand the prophecy. In Genesis 3, 15, it's amazing that when their eyes became open, God came down and started saying, uh, where's Adam, where are you? Well, I, I, was, I did something wrong. I was afraid, so I hid and I made these fig leaves. Okay, I need to give judgment now. God doesn't start with Adam, Eve. He has a conversation and a promise he makes to Satan. And we need to understand this promise. This promise and this prophecy is the future and the place you're standing right now and the whole meaning for Jesus. The whole reason for Christmas, the whole reason for, for Resurrection Sunday or Easter, as you may call it, the whole reason you're saved. Here it is. Here's the promise. What does he say? Is it up there? Read it with me. He says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed and he. So the promise God makes is not to Adam and Eve. The promise he makes is to Satan. In other words, what you have just done, what you have just done by tricking them in ignorance, I'm going to use this same woman, this same woman, because we can't blame her. She wasn't there when God told Adam, don't eat from this tree. The husband has to be the teacher. So listen to me, brother. Don't be scared of your wife. You got to teach her. I don't need nobody to teach me. Yes, you do, sweets. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Let that man be a husband. Now, we know you're smarter than us. That's why we don't try to argue with you. You got more words and your brain is connected to more brain cells. We're not going to win the argument. That's why we don't argue with you. So when we finally speak up, it's because we're trying to teach you something you don't know. Men ain't going to say nothing in the church today. Oh, they ain't going to say nothing. So, mm -mm, pastor. But sister, you can tell he's feeling good about what I'm saying when his toe steps, his foot starts tapping. <laughs> so he says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put from this day forward, I'm going to put enmity, a hatred, a grudge, a disagreement, a rub. I'm going to put something uncomfortable between the seed of the Satan, of seed of, of the Satan, which is the devil, and the seed of capital H, this Jesus. In other words, this woman's going to give birth to a child. This woman's going to give birth to a child, and this child's job will be to crush the head of Satan that was created today, taking your representation, but you will bruise his heel. There's a bruise of a heel and a bruise of a head. Which one is worse? The bruise of the head is the death of Satan's kingdom, but the bruise of the heel is the crucifixion of Jesus. So through the crucifixion of Jesus, Jesus will buy back our right to be called ambassadors or representations of him on earth so that there will be eventually some stuff we won't have to pray about all the time. All we have to do is show up in representation. There are going to be some places the whole you is going to show up now. In this next season, you won't just be showing up at work. But when you show up at work, heaven's going to show up at work. In this next season, the whole, the whole regalia of who heaven is is going to be showing up when you show up. You're going to show up and heaven's going to represent itself. Heaven's going to back you when you use words. Heaven's going to back you when you pray. When you try to do some things in this next season that will seem impossible to others, heaven's going to show up in full force to make sure it comes to pass. Those are the days that we're living in. Am I making sense? So watch now. This, this baby's going to be born. So, so Romans 16 and 20, because we have to prove this sometimes. In Romans 16 and 20, it says, and, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. 
He will crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. Amen. This, this, this is this, this is, is this, this, uh, Paul is telling us in Romans that what happened at the crucifixion is that Jesus crushed the head of Satan. And now he not only crushed the head of Satan through Jesus, he crushes the head of Satan through you. That when you're doing something on God's behalf, God shows up and cancels what the enemy was planning. Cancels the opportunity of those, of those who are being uh, manipulated by Satan and, and evil forces. He shows up and he crushes those opportunities so that what God wants to do through your life, he can do. Is anybody here today? I feel like you're listening. Galatians 4.4 4 says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son born of a woman. Here's the promise. I'm going to use that same womb, that woman, that woman, that woman. I'm going to use that same womb and I'm going to give birth to a Christ. It's going to be God and man in one. All God, all man in the womb of a woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. All God, all man in the womb of a woman. So watch this prophecy now in Isaiah, in Isaiah 9, 6, the Christmas prophecy, the Christmas prophecy. We quote it on Christmas. Unto us, a child is born, but unto us a son is given. This is, the, this is the other prophecy, but there's something special about this son. What does it say? On his shoulders is going to be salvation. No, salvation. This is what y'all been telling me for years. Jesus is bringing salvation. Salvation. He's bringing salvation. It's about salvation, brother. You need to be saved, brother. You need to be saved. I asked. I asked because I got saved everywhere I went. I was so desperate for God in college. So everywhere I went, it was the evangelical service. And at the end, I got saved at every service. I lifted my hands and I said, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take over my life. Hallelujah. And then I would leave. I would leave so confused and so lost. So the next one I went, Campus Crusade for Christ, I, I wanted to be, I, I mean, I wanted to know God. I knew church. I wanted to know God. And I lifted my hands and then they dismissed. And I'm sorry. Something came out of me in the middle of dismissal. Is that it? Is this all I get? Is this all I'm going to get? They said, what do you mean, brother? I said, I'm saved now. I get to go to heaven. But I'm 22. What am I going to do with all this stuff happening in my head and my body here? <laughs> what am I, what, what I going to do about my dreams? What am I going to do about school? What am I going to do about life? What does this mean? Brother? You just trust in the Lord. And I said, oh my God, I don't know what y'all talking about. This makes absolutely no sense to me at all. There's got to be something else. Then I got a hold of a little bitty book called The Power of Potential by Dr. Miles Monroe. I said, now I know what it means to be saved. I didn't get saved to go to heaven. I got saved to show up on earth. I gave my life to God so he could tell me what to do here. How I can live here. How I can fulfill my dreams here. How I can hear the voice of the Lord and serve him on the planet. Hallelujah. That changes everything. Say it. That changes. <clears throat> In the born child, there will be a given son. The child is born, but the son is given. And he will restore, it's not salvation. He will restore diplomacy. He will restore the government that was lost in Genesis. Say government. Not politics. Winning elections are different from governing. They're not the same. 
And we pray for every political official in the entire world. We pray for them every day. But the bottom line is this is not about politics. It's about governing people. And the best way to govern people is not to govern them. The best way to govern people is to point them back to the governor. <laughs> and teach them how to be ruled under God. And live in a relationship with him where the Bible becomes our truth. The covenants in the kingdom become the way we live our lives. I'm making sense? Thank you. Thank you, even if I'm not. So, so, so now well, let's watch Jesus now in John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Watch what Jesus, what he says. His words are so big. He said, uh, okay, I want you to understand. I'm, I'm getting ready to go away. And I know this is going to be interesting for you. So they want to know, well, what do you mean the way? What, what, what are you talking about? Listen to what he says. He says, I am the way. I'm the truth, I'm the life, and no one comes, listen to what he says, no one's going to come to the Father except how? Now this is, this may sound bold, it's not, it's just the way it works. He says, if you want to come to the Father, you have to come through me. You can't go through anyone else. There, there's no other conduit, there's no other road, there's no other way, there's no other truth, there's no other life. There's no, there's no other way to get to him except through me. Then, I mean, then he goes on to say, this is big stuff. Well, who is the father? We're trying to get to him. Since you say you're not it and you're leaving, how we get to the father? <laughs> That'd be what I was asking. If you're leaving and you're not the destination, you're the way to it. You're not the destination, you're the truth about it. You're not the destination, but you're the life that proves it exists. How do I get there? Jesus is like, let's trip him out for real. Let's mess him up. And he says these words. <laughs> if you have known me, you've known the Father. Hold up. You just said you were leaving and you're not the destination. He said, if you know me, you've known the Father also. And from now on, you know him and you've seen him. We just told you we haven't seen him. You're telling us we've seen him when we look at you. When Jesus get in the, when you get in the elevator, who they see? Huh? People are not going to know the Father until they know you. You don't, okay. I'm a, okay, okay. All right, I know. I, I get it. That most Christians are hanging out for heaven and trying their best to get in. And the little stuff we do is to make sure God doesn't get mad at us. <laughs> so we don't get to go. And we waste 70, 80, 90, 100 years trying to get someplace that Jesus already paid for us to go. How many of you would pay somebody, if you own a business, you would pay somebody to come to work for you and they just did everything they could to get by at work? Y'all like, mm-mm, I wouldn't do it. Then why do we expect Jesus to pay our mortgage? You ain't working for him. You're not, you're not working for him. You're working for yourself, for those idols in your head or whatever. You're not working for him. You got stuff you won't do. You got stuff that God's been trying to get you to do you won't do. You, you won't pay attention to what he's saying. You don't hear his voice. You don't obey him, but we go to him to get paid. Listen, let me tell you something right now. I, okay, I, I, fi I fired a student. I fired him, a graduate assistant. And he needed the grad, he needed the grad assistant. I fired him because he refused to wear the little T-shirt when he was at work. I fired him the third time he came without it. I reminded him. I fired him. I sent the grad assistant that was in charge of the programs, and I said, you need to go talk to him. He talked to him. Third day, he came without it. I gave him the letter. I said, you are fired. Go back to Minnesota. My boss came to me 
and said, he needs the graduate assistant. Can you work something out? I said, I already worked something out. I fired him. And I said, if you send me to hire him back, I'm quitting. He does not have the right to say he represents us and he doesn't let everybody else around him, uh, they're around him know he's representing us. So I don't know why he's not wearing his t-shirt. I don't know if he's hooking up with some girl in the locker room or in the bathroom. I'm not risking my life on a guy who won't say he works for me. Y'all okay? Y'all okay? The kids will be okay with this. Your children go to school and when they get there, they got clothes in their backpack. They change clothes before they walk into school. And they not, they not Joshua Williams. He walks in as Bo Jackson. My name is Bo. I'm going to show up at school and tell him, you either my son or you not. If you are my son, when I send you to school, you better represent me. Because I'm not coming up here to break up. These teachers work too hard. They don't need any junk from you. They don't need no shenanigans and no games. So wherever you are, you are Martin Williams. Now, y'all don't do that here in the Midwest, do you? Do y'all do that here? Do y'all go places and people say, ain't you such and such as baby? Huh? Has anybody ever told you in Walmart, I know your daddy, you know. Huh? Has anybody told you, little girl, you know, if your mama was here, I don't think she'd be pleased with the way you're acting. Have you ever showed up at school and a teacher who knows your parent says, would your mother approve? Did you leave the house dressed like that? Son, I know your father, he's not a bully. Why are you bullying the children in the school? And when you find out what happens to you as a parent, I'm coming there, give me a minute. What happens to you as a parent? Hmm? Your daughter's doing something and the father might show up and say, listen, you're, I'm not even going to tell your mama what you're doing, sweetheart. Because I know what your mama taught you. I was there when she taught you. You're not representing her well. You got a decision to make, sweetheart. People are like, you're a tough dad. Look here. <clears throat> I'm all that. Tough loving, meaningful, protective. But the first of all, I want to make sure I teach my children through their ignorance. This is what you don't know. And this is what you need to understand. In the same way, we can ask, Jesus said, you, you don't keep my commandments, yet you keep asking me for stuff. I mean... Okay, I know we're not supposed to do this here, but I told you I was going to help you. I don't want you hanging out here and you're going to be coming every Sunday trying to feel good. That's, that's not, that's, that, that's, that, 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 because feeling good, we have to ignore the truth in your life. <laughs> we, we have to ignore what's really going on. I said we have to ignore what's really going on. Because if we're looking at the truth and you're denying it, it don't mean the truth the, 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 the truth is real whether you're looking at it or not. And I'm telling you that, that if, if in your heart you really are at that place where you're like, I want to make a difference. I, I want to see God in my life. I really want to do some things that, that, that help the kingdom and help people. Then it's going to start with you. So we got we to gotta stop asking God to pay for us to go to battle and we're in home watching days of our lives. I, I love, uh, I like, uh, I like, I like sports. I like watching sports because it knocks all the walls down. It knocks, I like to watch football especially because it knocks all the walls down. Because at the end of the day, we fit in the tail. We fit in the tail if you was ready to play. We fit in the tail if you done practiced. We fit in the tail if you in shape. We fit in the tail if you know the plays. That's why I love the law, too. That when I'm getting ready to do something, I interview three or four lawyers. And I tell them I'm interviewing them. 
I said, I'm going to pay you well. I'm going to pay you what you charge. I'm not going to whittle you down to some price. Because when I get you, I want all of you. Now, I want to know what you know about this kind of law. That's interesting. That's interesting. Most people in the community don't even understand that kind of law. I'm not using you. Because you don't think I came ready to play. You don't think I'm studying law? I know the law. I'm just not a lawyer. I can't represent myself. It makes me a fool. So I'm here to educate my lawyer. If you think I'm dumb, you're going to question what I say. Okay, okay. I, I, I want somebody that's showing up. I want somebody that's going to show up and they, we can tell they practice. Okay, you, you in the second quarter. You in the second quarter. And now people just pushing you around the field. And you say you Christian. But that's really all you is. You're just a Christian. We're everywhere. Christians are all over the place. We got skinhead Christians. <coughs> we, got, we got Christians of every color that hate everybody. We got Christians who are naked. We got Christians who are rapping and singing and saying all sorts of weird stuff. We got Christians selling dope out of their house. The word Christians means nothing. Well, I'm Christian. What does that mean? Can you help me? What does that really mean? Well, I'm Christ-like. What does that mean? Well, I believe in the Bible. Which part? What part do you believe? AWC, what part do you believe? Do, do, do you, what, I mean, what, what, what part of it really makes sense to you? And if you give me one scripture, I know you're, you're just a Christian. And whatever environment I put you in, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb because you don't know the most important part of the Bible, which is Jesus was a king. Jesus was not a Christian. Hallelujah. Next year is going to be better. It is not. Because you don't know who you're working for. Well, I work for Jesus. I'm a servant of the Lord, brother. I serve Jesus and only Jesus. I'm from Mississippi. All of us talk like that down there. White, black, green, yellow. It's all the same accent. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We serve Jesus. I want to tell you about the great gospel, the good news of Jesus. Well, what is the good news of Jesus? What is the good news of Jesus? Well, I want to tell you that he was born in a manger. Yes, Lord, he was born in a manger, born of a virgin. Born of a virgin, and he was all God, he was all man. Yes, he was, brother. What else is in there? Well, he had to die on the cross. He had to die on the cross. I said, he did. Why? To save us, brother. Okay, so he died on the cross. What did he do after that? He ascended into heaven. That's wonderful, brother. So what else is there? Well, we live the rest of our lives just loving Jesus. Is that the gospel? No. Gospel means good news. The good news is not that he came. The good news is not that he died. The good news is not that he rose again. The good news is that when he got up, He ascended into the heavens and he set the captive free. He put crowns on the heads of men and women on the day of Pentecost. The good news is that I was born a king in Genesis. Somebody screwed that up for me. Jesus came and restored it back to my life and now I'm a king again. 
I don't care if heaven comes or goes. Wherever I go, I'm a king. Whatever happens, I'm a king. Some people are like, Lord Jesus, what is happening in this church? Yes, Earl and Betty Ann, this is the gospel. So let me skip ahead and let me finish this up. Twenty-five years ago, tw shoot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Twenty. Twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. I don't know. Well, it would have been. Oh man, yeah. It would have been April of 1990. Happy. We were happy serving the military, serving the army. It was beautiful in Korea. Woke up and God says, ah, uh, it's time for you to go home. Oh, we're going home. Okay. Linnell, we're going home. We're going back to the States. Where are we going, Martin? I don't know. We're going to follow the Lord. So I says, okay, uh, what do I need to do? I'm just going to go to this conference where my friends are. I know people all over the world. I'm going to go there, St. Louis, and I'm just going to do some interviews. We're just going to talk to people. Got to St. Louis, beautiful, wonderful. Got three job offers in the first hour I was there. I said, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to talk to my wife, and we're going to decide which one of these we're going to go. All southeast. Yeah. So, guy comes to talk to me. He's an elder at his Lutheran church, but he worked in the athletic department at UNO. He says, you're Martin Williams. Been looking for you all day. I said, I already got three offers. He says, I, he says, I know. Everybody's telling me. about. I said, he, says, uh, he says, but I want to talk to you about Omaha. I was walking. He walking behind me. I was walking. He says, he said, I want to talk to you about Omaha. I said, Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. I mean, Omaha, is that a place? Is it a university? I mean, what is it? So he's telling me about Omaha. Long story short, long story short, God wakes me up and her up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and she says, Omaha, this is the night before. So that's why I turned around. She woke up, sat up in the bed. She said, Omaha, went back to sleep. I'm like, Omaha, we haven't applied. What is, I don't know. So I just went back to sleep. So he said, Omaha, I said, for real. So Omaha's a real place. We take, the job, we take the job in Omaha. Hold on now. We, we take the job in Omaha, and I'm telling you, God almost killed us here. I thought it was the devil. No, I'm, I'm telling you, God choked the very life out of us. Choked us, I mean, chewed us up, sifted us like wheat until there was nothing. I was on my way to Linnell's parents just to tell them, we haven't cheated, we've not been unfaithful, but this marriage is not going to work. We are about to die in Omaha. During that time, in Mississippi, God says, don't leave your wife here. Don't tell her father that. Let me show you what I want you to do. We got back to Omaha, and now God says, you're free to go. Weird, right? Where am I going to go? Got a job offer to the University of Southern Mississippi to go work in the athletic department. Hallelujah. This is going to be so wonderful, south warmth. People that talk to you. People that leave their doors open. I mean, people that knock on the door for two eggs. Uh, people who say, I cook some greens. You got cornbread? Uh, yeah, I got some cornbread. Hey, Lucy May down the street has some string beans. So now you got eight families sitting in the front yard just eating. Was it a picnic table? No, ain't no picnic table. We eating out of one another's bowls. I was ready to go home. And God said to me, the vision I showed you as a boy, I want to do it here. I said, oh my God, you got to be kidding me. Here? Yeah. 
You want me to be a part of a church that confronts prejudice? You want me to be a part of a church where we all just come together and love one another? You want here? You want me to be a part of a church where everybody can become wealthy? Everybody? I mean, where jealousy and envy and strife is confronted? Where the systems of this world that people have built, you want a, you want a church on Sunday morning? The most segregated time in our country? 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, you want people to come together and bring their kids? <laughs> God, you are funny. He wasn't laughing. Here's our vision. Here's the vision. With Jesus as our example, we've made a decision. We proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the world by living a life of wisdom, health, abundance, liberty, unity, demonstrating that the kingdom of God really exists in all the nations. It really does exist. And we have this declaration that Ambassadors Worship Center is a place of love, hope, power. For every human being, for every living person, no matter where they're from. Our simple mission statement, simple. We only exist for one reason. We exist for one reason, and that's it. We exist so people can pursue and experience the kingdom of God. That's it. That's the only reason we're here. We're not here to fight people's battles. We're not here to separate. We're not, that's not what we're doing. We just want every human being to be able to know and understand what it's like to live in the kingdom of God. That's it. So this is our priority, which means... This is our priority. That mission statement, statement is sacred. It's not changing. It's our DNA. It's our foundation. It's who we are. Now, but we will find the best ways to do it. It's sacred. It's our one thing. But everything else we do will align with this vision. Even if we have to find better ways to do it. Are you here? So make sure you hear this. There are a few things that are different here now that have changed over the last two, three years. Most of it visible in the last one year, but underneath the surface, it's been done. It's been being done and you need to understand it. From, from a mobile app that allows us to stay connected no matter where we are, to our serve team experience where those who are serving are here earlier now. They're praying and they're preparing for you. They're getting ready for the city to come to this place. And they've been working on this for months. And it's been hard work. It's been changing attitudes. Some of it has been too much movement for some people. Too much change. But if we want to stay the way we were, you can't stay the way you were. You're always changing. So prepare for, to prepare for something better, you got to do something better. Our net groups, we've gone away from Wednesday night, which we were doing for over 15 years. We moved away from Wednesday nights because we felt like in our net groups, it's more important that we have relationships than just another service where you get to listen to a guy with one perspective. So that we can be connected we can love one another and know one another. We've hired four staff, four or five staff, with two more to be hired. 
I'm believing God supernaturally that these last two, God will get it done before New Year's Eve. He'll click it in their hearts. It'll be the right thing, and we'll be fully staffed. We'll have people on board that are here, here every day thinking about you, thinking about your children, thinking about worship, thinking about pastoring and shepherding, thinking about our building, thinking about programming, thinking about connecting to our city. And I want to thank you, AWC, because over the last 25 years, you have given. Our board of directors have saved. Our accounting people has helped us be accountable. Our lawyers and CPAs has kept us legal so that every penny has been saved and invested you allowed us to be able to position ourselves to hire. You did that. You did that. We have reconstructed our children's area. We have membership opportunities now where you can just join our church today. And some of you will do that. You'll say, I want to plug into this house. We're so glad to have you. Children, you're doing amazing. And number seven, we have core ministry opportunities also through partnership. There are some of you in this place today, and this may be your first day, but you're a Levite. You're called a church. You serve church. It's what you do. It's not that everyone should be. Everyone shouldn't be, and everyone's not. But there are some people you're called to church. You love church. It may not be your profession, but you like to see the house of God prosper. It's part of your blood. I'm going to be asking you to plug into what this house is doing. Give your heart to it as much time as you can. We're setting up our serve teams where you don't have to serve more than once a month unless you're just a Levite and you just want to. Am I making sense? So here's the reason for all of these. The reason for all this is that I really believe that there are thousands in this city and in our region that needs to hear this message. They need to know what I've just taught you. I believe there are thousands. And I don't just think they're in Africa or Mexico. I don't just think they're in Michigan. I think they're in Omaha. I think they're in Papillion and Ralston. They're in North Omaha. They're seeking answers. They're in West Omaha. They're seeking answers. South Omaha. They're in North Platte. They're in an hour's driving distance from here. And they have been looking for us. And now it's time for us to represent him to them. We've never done TV commercials and all these kind of things. We didn't really need to upgrade our website. But now is the time for us to tell everybody about this glorious kingdom of God. Where they can find love and power. I believe that representing the kingdom... To the world is our assignment so in this generation I'm here to assure that as I pass it on to these next group of leaders who are amazing by the way this next group of leaders they're not going to take a lot of prisoners they're going to get a lot of stuff done very quickly they're a new generation but I want to make sure they know why we exist so they don't terraform something that God's not doing It's our assignment. So I believe that AWC, if I can say this and not you hear what I'm saying, I believe that Ambassadors Worship Center should decide to be the premier church. For worship in the kingdom, for knowledge and revelation in the kingdom, for love and peace and joy and relationship in the kingdom. I believe we should be the premier place where people come to ask, how are they doing that? How can they afford, how do they stay together? How do they keep their power? How do they love and bless one another? How do they do that? We should be the place where people find that. And I didn't ask you to help me with the decision. <laughs> I decided for you. It's our role. It's what we should do. So here's the big ask. My big ask for you is would you consider, especially those who are Levites, would you consider joining with us? Joining with us in this simple strategy. 
simple strategy. We're not going to be all over the place. We never were. We're not going to be doing a bunch of stuff we don't do well. <laughs> we're just going to do what we do well. Right now, one weekend service till we grow. This weekend service, powerful. We are here at 10 till or 5 till 10. We're here ready for worship. We're not walking in at 10 after or 15 after. We come here like we're going to a job we like. And everybody's prepared for that day. We're telling our friends and our family, number two, we're gonna, we're gonna do right here, we're gonna build great family ministries, environments from ch for children from birth to college. And we're going to build that on Sunday mornings. We're building it now. We're going to build great atmospheres for children and everyone to learn about who the king is and who they are. Number three, we're going to have a discipleship environment for adults, a teaching environment, along with drench, along with training, along with helping people find out what their callings are. We're gonna do, and I'll provide this for you later. You can get it on the app. You can, you'll, you'll be able to tap into all this stuff while we're fasting and praying. Net groups. This is where we're gonna build intimacy. This is, this is where I find out not just who you voted for, but where you're from. How you feel about life. Who are your people? What are your attitudes? Why do you look at life the way you look at it? I got to know you. And our small groups allow us to be in one another's lives. So we know the essence of the other person. Am I making sense? And lastly, we're finding a way right now, and I can tell you a little bit about it, more about it later. We're finding partnerships in our city. Partnerships with people who are grossly involved in changing our city, blessing our city our police department, our fire departments, our teachers, our schools. We're finding strategic partnerships so that we're not doing what we're doing alone. We're doing it with other people who are doing it. Amen. It's our time to be a supernatural blessing to this city. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's message. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you are interested in not missing any other videos that we upload, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. Also, if this message has impacted you in such a way, you can also click the link down below to donate and to give to our ministries here at Ambassadors Worship Center. Anyway, thank you so much and we'll see you next week.